Welcome back to English Classes Online. I am Benjamin. Today's video is about the basic grammar lesson, Rules for Beginners. And the focus is on 19 rules for using English nouns. In this video, you will learn the rules for using English nouns correctly. This is a very important aspect of the English grammar and if you are interested in videos like this kindly subscribe to this channel click on the bell icon as well so that whenever a new video is uploaded on this channel you will be instantly notified To communicate accurately and effectively in any language requires adequate knowledge of the rules that govern the use of that language. English is certainly not an exception. As a matter of fact, anyone who desires to gain proficiency in the use of English ought to learn English grammar. This is because learning English grammar is learning the rules that govern the use of English. There is no doubt that most of the errors committed by the majority of English speakers are attributable to poor grammar or inadequate knowledge of the rules that govern the use of English. In this video, we are going to examine some of the rules for using nouns in English. You know that nouns are naming words words that name persons, things, ideas, places, institutions, all right? And the, you can't talk about anyone or anything without mentioning it. And so it is very important for us to master the correct use of the nouns because nouns perform very important roles in English sentences. Now let's begin to look at the rules governing the use of nouns in English. Number one, countable nouns can be used with the indefinite article and they have a plural form. Of course you have the singular and the plural forms of countable nouns. You can, for example, talk about a book all right, you can say a book or you can say books. Two books, a book, all right, a chair, a man, then you can talk of books, you know. I have two books. If you have only one, you can say I have a book, you know. Uh, we rented a chair. If you are talking of one, you, we rented a chair. If you are talking of two or more, we rented some chairs or we rented 10 chairs you know you can talk of a man you know Musa is a man you know Musa and uh, Obi are men you know something like that so when you uh, observe the rules the fundamental rules that govern the use of countable nouns, you will not commit grammatical blunders. But if you say, you know, I have a books, you commit an error. If you use, if you say I have a books, you commit an error. If you say I have two book without putting S, of course, you also commit a grammar error there. So we ought to observe the rules that govern the use of countable nouns. Countable nouns can be used with indefinite article and they have a plural. You know, when you have a singular, you use the indefinite article a or an. If you are talking of elephant, you can say, I saw an elephant, 
or I saw two elephants in the zoo. All right. So that's the rule. You use an indefinite article with the singular, but with the plural, you don't use the indefinite article. You can use a definite article when you are talking of the uh, something or someone you already referred to that is known to both the speaker and the listener. You know, you can say, you know, give me the book I asked you to buy for me. You already know the book, I know the book, so we use the definite article. Or give me the books, all right? Okay, so <clears throat> rule number two, an uncountable noun has only one form, no singular, no plural, so it can be used with or without a determiner. You know, when we talk of uncountable noun, it refers to those things we cannot count. One example is water. You cannot count water one by one. So you cannot say one water, two waters, and all that. No. So you can use it without a determiner or with a determiner. You can say, give me water to drink. You can also say, give me some water to drink. Then you can use partitives when you want to uh, talk about more, uh, I mean, if you want to, let me say, pluralize an uncountable noun, you use what we call partitives. Now, a partitive is something that gives you a measure. For instance, you can say, give me a cup of water or two cups of water. Then you can talk of much water, you can talk of a lot of water, you can talk of plenty of water, you can talk about little water. But it is wrong to say a water, all right? You cannot say a water because that is absolutely incorrect. You cannot say an advice. The word advice is uncountable. So a lot of people commit this blunder you hear even those who are supposed to know talking about i want to give you an advice that is ungrammatical it is incorrect you can't talk of a rice you can't talk of a furniture you can talk of some pieces of furniture some items of furniture you can talk of a bag of rice all right a bag of rice then you can talk about advices or rices of furnitures all these actually require the use of partitives. Rule number three, you only pluralize uncountable nouns by using partitives, as I earlier said. That is, words or phrases that show a part or quantity of something. For example, two slices of bread. You can talk about two slices of bread. You know, but you can't talk of a bread. You can talk of two loaves of bread or two slices of bread. You, you know, so slices is an example of partitives. You can talk of two pinches of salt. You cannot say give me a salt or give me many salts. No, you can't count salt. So you can only use partitives such as pinch, a pinch of salt or two pinches of salt or a bag of salt if you are buying uh, that uh, large quantity. Then you can talk of three spoonfuls of sugar because sugar is uncountable. You can talk of three pieces of meat. You, it's wrong to get, go into a restaurant and say, give me two meats. You know, it is incorrect because you can only use partitives for meat because meat is uncountable. Don't say, give me two meat or one meat. Say, give me one piece of meat or two pieces of meat. You can talk of drops of water, cups of water, and so on. Bits of information. You know, you cannot talk of informations or an information. No, it is incorrect. You can talk about items of furniture 
but certainly not a furniture of furnitures. You can talk of pieces of jewelry, loaves of bread, and so on and so forth. So always learn to use partitives when you want to pluralize uncountable nouns. This is really very important. You know, you when you want to pluralize uncountable nouns, you use partitives. So oh, that is really very important. Okay, let's uh, go ahead to uh, let me try and move this forward. But I need uh, okay. Number four, when an uncountable noun is used as the subject of a verb, the verb is singular. Whenever you use an uncountable noun as the subject of a verb, you use it with a singular verb. So, honey is sweet. It will be incorrect to say honey are sweet because honey is uncountable noun and it must be used with a singular verb. The second example, the money has been made, has been paid into the bank. The money has, has is a singular verb, has been paid. So it is incorrect to say the money have been paid because you can't uh, use a plural verb with an uncountable noun. You can say water is essential. You cannot say water are essential. Water is uncountable, so it always goes with a singular verb. So these rules must be observed. If you notice the rules we have discussed so far, you discover that they are unbreakable. If you break them, you commit ungrammaticality. You commit a grammatical error. So you need to learn these rules and you need to apply these rules in order to speak and write English correctly. Rule number five, some invariable nouns ending in S take singular verbs. For example, news, you know, when you talk of news, you can say the news is, it's wrong to say the news are, even though it ends in S, that's why it is an invariable noun, because you discover that when it ends in S, it appears on the surface to be a plural noun, but in 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 reality, it is a singular uh, noun. I mean, it 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 is an uncountable noun, in a sense that you cannot use plural a plural verb with it. Again, you see countries like Brussels, Wales, United States, United Nations. You cannot say United States are. A country, no? You can say United States is, United Nations is. You can only use a, a singular verb. Athens, mathematics, for instance, is a subject. All subjects that end in S, we take a singular verb. Physics is my favorite subject, for example, economics. Linguistics is my favorite subject. Classics, measles. These are also, you know, disease, uh, diseases or, you know, illnesses that end in S. Rashes, rickets, you know. You can say measles is a, is a disease of the skin, for example, you know, is. All right? So always learn to use the singular verb with invariable noun. Okay, let's now move on to the next one, which should be rule number six. Some abstract nouns are uncountable when used in a general sense, but countable in a particular sense. You see, we are now talking about uncountable noun. All right. For example, Mike hasn't got enough experience for the job. In this case, it is uncountable. When we use these abstract uh, nouns, you know, uh, when we use this abstract noun, don't forget we are dealing with some abstract nouns, not all, some of them. 
when used in a general sense, it is uncountable. But in a particular sense, it can become countable. All right. Now, this first example, we are using the word experience in a general sense. Because experience here is a, it's an abstract noun. Now, Mike hasn't got enough experience for the job. So, we, we in this general sense, we can't say Mike hasn't got enough experiences. No. Because we are using experience in a general sense. It is now used as an uncountable noun. Now, let's look at when we use it in a particular sense in a specific uh, situation. It was a strange experience. You know, it was a strange experience. We are talking of one particular experience. You know, in this case, we singularize it, a strange experience, which means if we are talking of uh, some more than one strange experience, then we can talk, talk about some strange experiences. You know, when you use it, you know, in a particular sense, we can singularize or uh, I mean, or pluralize experience. Let's look at the third example. Time waits for nobody. Now you see, time is uncountable. You know, I mean, time is abstract. When we use it in a general sense, it is uncountable. Time waits for nobody. This is talking about time generally as a concept. All right. We use it in an uncountable uh, sense. But let's look at uh, using it in a particular sense. The couple had a good time. You know, we are talking of a particular time, you know, a particular uh, moment, you know, moments of pleasure that, you know, the couple had. And when we use it in that particular sense, you know, we can say the couple had a good time, all right? Good time. Now, rule number seven, some uncountable nouns are plural. They have no singular forms, you know? Some are just plural. You don't, you can't singularize them. Example is arms, you know? Customs, groceries, tanks, you know? So, uh, you cannot say thanks is given, you know. Thanks are given. All thanks are given to God. All, all thanks were given. Groceries, customs, arms, you know. So these are always, uh, they have no singular forms. And you they also have a S attached to them. You don't miss Confuse, don't confuse them with some other uh, types of nouns we are going to uh, uh, discuss, which end in S. We already we have seen them, like news ends in S, but it's singular. All right. Don't, uh, you see, these ones are a different, they have a different behavior. They end in S and they actually, uh, they are actually used as plurals you know, and they have no singular forms. Rule number eight, uncountable nouns are sometimes used in the plural form to convey specific meaning, that is special meaning. When you pluralize certain uncountable noun, you give it a special meaning or a specific meaning if you like. Example is waters. You know, we are already said categorically that water is uncountable. But there is a, a situation in which we can pluralize water. And when we add S here, we are using it to refer to rivers, lakes, sea, or ocean. And so we can talk of Nigerian waters, all right? Nigerian waters. The, when we are talking of Nigerian waters, we are talking of the rivers, the lakes, the sea, the ocean, the different types and sources of water you can find in Nigeria. Another example is works. Work is uncountable in itself, but when we pluralize it, we use it to refer to books, music, paintings, 
or art that is produced. In this sense, we can talk of the works of Chinua Achebe, you know, the works of Wole Sheinka, the works of Napoleon Hill, the books written by that author are referred to as his works. Now, another example is fishes. You know, fish is uncountable, just like meat. You can't walk into a restaurant and say, give me two fishes. That will be absolutely wrong. You can use partitives to talk about a piece of fish or two pieces of fish. But when we pluralize fish by saying fishes, we use it to refer to different species of fish, such as catfish, tilapia, you know, crayfish, and all different types of fish. So when someone says there are many fishes in the river, it includes different types, including the whale, the shark, all right? So when we are referring to different species of fish, then we can use fishes, all right? All right, so let's proceed. Rule number nine, some nouns can be both countable and uncountable. For example, Rose likes coffee. You can talk of coffee, you can, of course you can't count coffee. Coffee is uncountable. But when you say, can I get a coffee, it's just like the other one, you give it a, a special meaning. You are now talking of a cup of coffee. It now becomes countable. You can say, can I get you a coffee? In this case, you are saying, can I get you a cup of coffee? All right. Now, get the idea down on paper. This is uncountable. In this case, idea is uncountable. Candidates must answer two questions from each paper. This is a set of paper, you know. This uh, is a set of printed questions in, uh, in an exam uh, hall, and this becomes countable. Of course, when we talk of idea, get the idea down on paper, is we are talking of idea as an uncountable something but you can talk of some ideas you know ideas you know main ideas and you know supporting ideas so you can pluralize ideas you know you can use it as countable you can use it as uncountable rule number 10 a collective noun takes a singular verb when the reference is to a group acting in a collective fashion and a plural verb when the reference is to members of a group are acting as single individuals you know a group noun a, a, i mean a collective noun is the name of a group of persons or things for instance family is a collective noun then when the when you are looking at the group as acting together you know acting as a unit you know then you use it with a singular verb such as we have here a new family has moved in next door has is a singular verb we are looking at the family as one acting as one unit but when we begin to look at the individual members of the family we are examining their behavior as individuals. We can use a plural verb. For example, the family are always fighting among themselves. In this case, the family as a group is not acting as one unit. They are acting in their capacities as individual members of the family. You know, so you use a plural verb. The verb are is a, the plural verb the plural form of the verb to be the singular is is you know we can say the family is living next door is that here we are using are because we are looking at members of the family and their actions all right so that is the way it is done the a similar thing applies to uh, 
when you are talking of a class, when you are talking of a, a, a committee, when you are talking of a band of musicians, when you are talking of a choir, you know, a collective now is the name of a group of persons or things, and the same rule applies to all of them. All right? So let's look at the next rule, and this has to do with what we call pluralia tantum. Now, what do we call pluralia tantum? Now, let's look at it. Pluralia tantum. Now, a pluralia tantum refers to nouns that only occur in plural and take plural verbs. Uh, of course, this is an extension of the one we have already mentioned. Now, words like areas, areas, amends, archives, arms, auspices, bowels, dregs, earnings, fireworks, funds, quarters, regards, particulars, remains, riches, savings, tanks, and so on and so forth. You know, these are called pluralia tantum. They are nouns that occur, only occur in the plural because they end in S. And again, they take plural verbs. You can't use them as singular. Uh, a, a singular, uh, you can't use them with singular verbs. For instance, you can talk of the arrears, you know, the arrears of someone's salary. You, are, you can talk of amends, archives, all these are, are plurals, you know, arms. You cannot say they carry an arm, no, they carry arms, all right, all species, bowels. Now, let's talk of earnings, for instance, you know. You can say your earnings have increased. You cannot say your earnings has increased. No. When you talk of funds, you use it with plural uh, verbs. Talk of remains. Remains, you know, refer to someone's a, a corpse, for instance, the, the dead body of someone. But you can't say his remains, you know, has been buried no his remains have been buried so you use it always with plural verbs riches riches are not riches is all right you can use riches with a singular verb the same thing with savings you know you cannot say i have made a saving no you can't singularize it it's always used as a plural in a plural form with plural verbs all right so number 12 is summation plural summation plural these are nouns uh, referring to tools and articles that consist of two equal parts joined together and they can be used with partitives such as a pair of scissors you know three pairs of trousers you cannot say, uh, I asked uh, Juliet to buy me a trouser. No, I asked Juliet to buy me a pair of trousers. You cannot say, give me a scissors. No, give me a pair of scissors. Other examples include spectacles, a pair of spectacles, a pair of pants, a pair of jeans, a pair of pajamas, a pair of pliers, a pair of knickers, a pair, a pair of shorts, and so on and so forth. These are called summation plurals. And you can only use them with partitives, all right, such as a pair of, or pairs of, all right? So let's uh, proceed to rule number 13. Some nouns. All right, let's uh, clean this up so it doesn't give us wrong impression. Rule number 13, some nouns in, you know, ES, that is S or ES, can be treated as singular or plural. For example, one or two series of lectures. When you look at the word series, it can be used, it can be treated as singular or plural. You can talk of one series of you can talk of a series of lectures or two series of lectures or many series of lectures 
Now you can talk of a real species of beetle, you know, species, a species, or some species. You can talk of many species of dogs, all right? So some nouns are can be treated as singular or plural, you know, which end in es or i or or, or s, all right? Species, all right? Rule number 14, the noun modified by, S, by the S genitive may be omitted if the context makes its identity clear, all right? Let's get it clear. You may not understand by all this grammatical jargon here, but let's look at the example so it becomes clearer. For example, my bag is bigger than Regina's. You know, instead of saying, my bag is bigger than Regina's bag, we can omit bag because it is implied, all right? My bag is bigger than Regina's. So we omit bag. That's what we mean. The noun modified by the S genitive may be omitted if the context makes is identity clear it's already clear we are talking of bag here you know uh, and when we talk of the possessive possessive modifier here is regina's bag my bag is the possessive adjective then regina's is the possessive adjective for the same bag my bag is bigger than regina's bag we can omit bag and simply say my bag is bigger than Regina's, all right? The second example, I shall be at the dentist's. Instead of saying I shall be at the dentist's office or clinic, I can omit clinic or office, and I simply say I shall be at the dentist's, all right? All right, so let's look at rule number 15. In a double genitive, an of genitive can be combined with the S genitive. You know, we are now talking of possessive. When we are looking, when we are using that grammatical term genitive, we are referring to the possessive. All right. Now, for example, a friend of the lawyers has arrived. You know, a lot of people will tell you a friend of the lawyer. That is incorrect. A friend of the lawyers, you know, and you are talking of the lawyer's friend. But when you want to uh, use it in this manner, a friend of the lawyers has arrived. If you are talking of your own friend, you can say a friend of mine. You cannot say a friend of me. You can say my friend or a friend of mine. All right, so in that case, we use the possessive. This is what we call double genitive, double genitive, and that is uh, grammatically acceptable. Another example is a daughter of Mrs. Okafor has arrived. It's not a daughter of Mrs. Okafor. You can talk of Mrs. Okafor's daughter, but if you want to use it in a double genitive, then you must add the possessive here. A dub, a, I mean, a daughter of Mrs. Okafos has arrived. A daughter of Mrs. Williams or a daughter of Mrs. Um, uh, let me use uh, a daughter of Mrs. Smith has arrived. A, a daughter of Mrs. Uh, uh, Johnson's you know, so has arrived. Now let's look at a third example. Any son of Mr. Balogun, any son of Mr. Balogun's is welcome. Now again, uh, we have to indicate the apostrophe and S here. All right. Any son of Mr. Balogun's is welcome. It will be wrong to say any son of Mr. Balogun, no. Any son of Mr. Balogun's is welcome. All right? So that's the way we use double genitive.
Now let's move on. Number 16, I mean uh, rule number 16. Some temporal nouns can take the S genitive, for example, a month's salary, a week's holiday, today's business, a moment's thought. You know, these are temporal nouns. We will talk of a month's salary. It, 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 some people omit this the, the genitive here, this possessive apostrophe, and that makes their expression incorrect. When you talk of a month's salary, it's incorrect. You talk of a month's salary. If you talk of a week holiday, no, it's wrong. A week's holiday. You, when you talk of today's business, it's wrong. Today's business. A moment's thoughts. All right? Then, rule number 17. When more than is used with a number, the number that comes after more than determines the verb. For example, if we say more than two teachers are required. But if what comes after more than is one, then a singular verb is used. This actually should be well understood because this is where people commit grammatical errors. So more than one teacher is required. A lot of people will tell you more than one teacher are required. You know, no, more than one teacher is required is. But more than two teachers are required. So when more than comes after, you know, uh, a number, then the number that comes after more than determines the verb. If it is one that comes after more than, it is followed with a singular verb. If it is two or more as a number that comes after when, when it is two, three, four, five, and so on, that comes after more than, then it has to be the plural verb. For example, if we say more than five teachers are required, but more than one teacher is required all right so let's uh, take let's uh, take the last one uh, the last two uh, rules rule number 18 when every is followed by a plural noun the verb is plural but when it is followed by a singular noun the verb is singular you see something similar to the one we have we saw before something that comes after more than determines the verb whether it should be plural or singular for example every 50 cartons of spaghetti you buy carry a bonus of an extra carton because we have a plural number here all right 50 cartons a plural every 50 cartons of spaghetti you buy carry carry is a plural verb because we have you know uh, a plural noun coming after every now let's look at a situation where you know a singular noun comes after every and then we must have a singular verb every carton of spaghetti you buy carries a bonus of one package so you can take note of the difference between the first example and the second example. In the first example, we have a plural noun, 50 cartons of spaghetti coming after every, and it is used with a plural uh, verb. In the second example, we have a singular noun, carton of spaghetti, not cartons, you know and then is used with a singular verb now the last rule is rule number 19 here when a number of is used usually with a plural noun it takes plural verb but when the number of is used it takes a singular verb all right for example a number of 
robbery suspects have been arrested because we have the plural suspects here a number a number of plural a, a number of robbery suspects have been arrested then let's look at the second example the number of lunatics has increased in our society you can you can now see the number the number we are we are looking at the number here which is specific the other one is non-specific a number of robbery suspects have been arrested you know a number of and then the number we are here we are specifying the number has increased because we are looking at the number and uh, as what exactly determines the use of of the verb here so this exactly is where we are going to draw the curtain in today's video we have been looking at the rules you know the rules 19 rules for using english now this is basic grammar a basic grammar lesson and we are looking at rules for beginners we have looked at those uh, areas you know that constitute sources of grammar grammar errors for beginners you know so this lesson is really very important for everyone who is learning uh, the use of english and of course if you are a student whether you are going in for your senior school certificate examination or even for the jam exam of course rules like these are what examiners love to test your knowledge of because these are basic rules of basic grammar rules for beginners and you are expected to master rules like these before you uh, you move on to the advanced level because if you don't understand these basic rules of course you are going to find it difficult when you get to the advanced level of course you will find this uh, the grammar of the english language rather uh, a complex thing to handle but when you understand the basic rules these rules will form the 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 foundation for your understanding of other aspects of english grammar so that's how it has been in today's uh, lesson i want to thank you for being part of today's episode if you have any comments or commendations questions or suggestions you can leave them in the comment section they are really very useful to me when people suggest some topics i handle uh, them with dispatch because i really highly esteem my subscribers and viewers on this channel and i want to say a big thank you to all of you who have been supporting this channel if you enjoyed today's video like the video and share it with your friends and relations if you have not subscribed kindly subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below don't forget to click on the bell icon as well so that when the next video goes live on this channel you will be the first to be notified see you in the next video and bye.